Hey y'all, it's your girl Carmen, and I'm gonna be doing a quick story time about how I was fake engaged back in the day when I was in college. I still have this ring here, and basically I'm gonna tell you a story of how I was almost engaged to this guy that was in the Navy, okay? So I'm from San Diego. If you're from San Diego, there is a large military presence there. And I'm gonna tell you all about it while I make some tostadas really quickly because I did not want to go to the grocery store and make food. So let me show you what I'm working with because la malita pobreza and inflation, you already know. Okay. So I'm going to try to make some magic with this. We will see. No particular uh, preference for the tuna brand, but I have this in my pantry. I also got this. I found a limon, so let's work with it. Okay, so story time of how I was almost engaged. Um, so I'm from San Diego, and I used to live with this group of girls in an apartment complex. I used to live at 5025. I don't remember. I haven't been in college in a while. But I used to live in these apartment complexes uh, really close to San Diego State. And it was my first time, you know, living in an apartment and living with other girls. So it was also my first time just living and I mean like no adult supervision I had always you know been like for the most part I'm a very chill girl like very like goody two shoes I guess you would say back in the day so no estaba vivida like I was very sheltered I didn't really know much about the world so when I lived in these apartments you know it was my first time being away from home there were so many like just so many temptations in that apartment I mean like boys, alcohol, sex, like everything that you could think of, of like Sodom and Gomorrah, I don't even know if I'm saying correctly, it was there in that apartment. <laughs> A lot of debauchery was going on at 5025 apartments, okay? Um, if you're looking to, you know, experience college life, I say definitely live on your own because you'll understand what I'm talking about. But yeah, so during my time, Living at 5025, I connected really, really well with one of my roommates. Like, we would do a lot of things together. And she was also really friendly. Like, she would invite me um, out to her friends. She was the only one in our apartment that didn't attend San Diego State. She was going to Grossmont at the time. So everybody else was San Diego State. And since so she went to Grossmont, like, she had a different group of friends. And you know, if you're in community college too, there is a lot of like uh, military presence there as well. Like, you know, people are trying to get their degrees. So you just need people, being in college, you need people from all over. So, you know, one day she was like, hey, um, come with me to this bonfire. And I was game, like I was pretty much game for everything because like I mentioned, it was my first time not living at home. Like I never really dated in high school. So college was the first time that I was like, wow, like, look at all these men, like, I want to date. <laughs> so yeah, for the most part, I was really down with everything. I was, I was down. So I was like, cool, let's go. So she took me to a bonfire. And at this bonfire, there was a lot of guys from the Navy. And at that time, my roommate was talking to this Navy guy. So it made sense, you know? So this is where I met, let's call him... Jay. <laughs> this is where I met Jay. And, you know, he definitely wasn't my type, but just the way that he was talking to me and making me feel very welcomed and, you know, like all of that I take into consideration. It's not just how you look, but it really is like how you make me feel. I'm going to take a water break. Yeah, he made me feel really nice and appreciated. So I was like, cool. I didn't think anything of it, so I gave him my number. Um, I did have Instagram at the time, but I didn't give him my Instagram. <laughs> I gave him my number. So from there, we were just like chatting and texting, and I was like, wow, like, it was my first time actually to like really, really talking to a dude via text, and, you know, like getting all those little butterflies. Um, I'm finally making the turn. I had to cut up everything. But yeah, so finally getting those butterflies. So basically we started texting a lot. There was a lot of energy being exchanged via text. 
and I was like, wow, like, you know, sharing my thoughts and feelings with this person. I feel like that always happens when you just connect with someone via text. You start like sharing a lot and things like that. But it also made sense why he was putting so much energy. He was bored. Like, you know, if when you're in the military, like, you don't get a lot of time to be outside and have like a, a regular life. You know, you are on an assignment or you are supposed to be doing other things. So you don't get a lot of free time. So I get it, when you connect with someone and you start sharing, you know, your feelings and things like that, things can move very quickly. Yo, this lipstick, period. <laughs> um, this lipstick I actually got for a Christmas present, so it's not a brand. It's like a generic red lip lipstick, but I'm wearing it now. So yeah, so yeah, things just started moving really, really fast via text and we actually started hanging out more. So my roommate started noticing like, wow, you're really hanging out with Jay a lot, like a lot. And I mean like a lot, like we, we would go on dates, we would do like super cute things. I met his family. So he is from Michigan and he already told me from the beginning like, hey, I'm just doing my, you know, my time here in San Diego, most likely I'm gonna be stationed somewhere else. I think he had told me that he was gonna be stationed in Florida. So I already knew that, you know, he was gonna leave. And I, it was kind of like romantic too, cause I was like, oh my God, like I met him during this time, I'm falling in love, la la la. So during that process where I was meeting his family, which I was like, what the hell? Now that I think about it, now that I'm grown, I'm like, wow, Carmen, like red flag. He was telling me all these things that like, he saw a future with me that he was like, I've never met anyone like you. Well, of course, you're, hello, <laughs> I'm a vibe. No, but yeah, he was like, I've never met anyone like you. And I guess his family was just in town to visit him. And he was like, you know, crazy idea, but I would like for you to meet my family. And me, I was like, yeah, down. <laughs> parents love me, okay? I make a really good impression on parents. So yeah he introduced his family to me his family started asking me a lot of questions his dad was really cool his mom was kind of like who are you and why are you talking to my son water break let me show you what i got going on so far okay so i cut up the stuff um this is what i'm working with okay la pobreza i'm sorry okay so this man you know, I get to meet his mom. His mom is kind of suspicious of me and I get it. Cause she, she knows her son was not gonna be in San Diego for long. So she was kind of like, I just want you to know that I appreciate you, you know, spending time with Jay and making him, him like feel really comfortable here in San Diego, you know, cause he's not from here. But she was basically like telling me what's up. She's like, don't get your hopes up, you know, like this is probably just like a little thing, la la la. Y'all, I was in love, okay? I really like this guy. Well, now, now that I know, I think I was just like, everything was going so fast that, you know, I, I thought it was love. And also like, I don't know, like if this was my first time ever really like engaging with a man, you know, I was like living on my own, like, like I mentioned, I never really dated in high school or had really like any relationship experience. I count that as my, like a little relationship experience. <sighs> my God. So yeah, <laughs> his mom warning, warning me, girl, it's not gonna work out. So yeah, so after um, we met with his parents, you know, his parents left and it's so crazy how timing works, but it was also during that month that he was going to find out where he was going to be uh, permanently stationed. He was like, there is a possibility that I could be stationed in San Diego, but he was like, most likely, you know, it's not going to happen. Um, and this, this man didn't tell me that his first choice was uh, Florida. <laughs> he wanted to be stationed in Florida. So this man already knew that nothing was going to happen. So also, we had never been intimate so we never had sex we never had you know the good stuff 
it was basically all just like kissing, hugging, like really innocent things. And you know, it had, maybe I would say like, it was that coming down to the month of like, he was gonna find out where he was gonna go and all that stuff. And the man started getting very like persistent to, you know, do more physical things. And he was really trying to be like, you know, like I'm about to leave. Mm -hmm. Of course, he just wanted the kitty, like whatever. I'm so glad that we never did anything because he, now retrospect, I'm like, no, nah, he was just trying to get in. I'm like, no. I, I was also a virgin at that time. So like I was not experienced with anything intimate and I'm really glad that I did it with him, that I didn't <laughs> do it with him. <laughs> Correction. So yeah, basically he came over to my place and he was like, I have something for you. He had already found out that he was going to Florida. He's like, I have something for you. I want us to be together. Like, and honestly, like he was a really cool guy. Like there was things that I was like, wow, like he's really chill. Like I wish we were friends and stuff, but then things would get really toxic too. And the thing about me is that sometimes the red flags look a little orange to me or I just don't pay as much attention as I should. But he would tell me things like, you know, we should be together. You should come out to see me, la la la. Like whenever I would share things with him about my aspirations, because at that time, you know, I was early in college. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I always had these dreams that I wanted to move to LA. And I never really told anyone this, but when I was a sophomore in college, I wanted to move to LA. I wanted to be in entertainment. I wanted to do so many things. And I just never really shared with people because I was very shy and I wasn't comfortable with myself and being creative and being out there. So I was confiding in this man, like pretty much my secrets. And he would tell me like, I don't know if that'll happen for you. Um, he's like, he would make me feel very small. So. You know, at that time I was like, oh, maybe I'm not good enough. And maybe like I am in love with him. And like, this is all that life has to offer. And I remember that day he was like, I got something for you. And I was like, what is it? And that's when he told me too, that he was going to Florida. So I was really sad, but he was like, I have something for you. He's like, you're going to always remember me. And during that week too, like I was basically confiding in him, like, Hey, I'm going to miss you. Like, I really hope that we stay connected. And I just kept sharing things with him about like my goals and my dreams and everything that he said he would like strike down. <sighs> so then he decided, he was like, here, I have a ring. I wanna like propose to you. So this is a cloud out ring. I don't even know if I'm wearing it correctly, but one side is supposed to be you're open to love. The other side is that you're engaged or whatever. I think he put it on, on the side that I'm taking. I don't know and he also insisted on having sex and I was like that's not happening so yeah basically he was like this is the ring I want to give to you basically making a promise to me that's what I'm calling it a fake engagement he wanted me to like be loyal to him I mean at least I was pendeja but I wasn't that pendeja because I was like how am I gonna be loyal to a man that doesn't even live here but yeah he was like here you go la 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 and it was cute and I actually keep it today because it's a constant reminder of like everything that this man said I couldn't do I've been doing and it's also like just a reminder of like wow like life is so crazy whenever I'm feeling down I feel like I can't do nothing I look at this ring as a reminder of like I'm gonna thrive I'm gonna live and I'm proving to the world and to myself because I'm like my hardest critic that I can do it. But yeah, that's how I was fake engaged. Let me show you how the status came out. Here you go. I'm gonna add some crema and yeah, I'm having a soda too. But that's the end of the story time of how I was fake engaged. I kept the ring because it's just like nostalgic for me. Like I said, whenever I feel down, I look at it and I'm like, I'm here, I'm in LA, and there's more. There's more that I'm gonna do. New York, New York is a place that 
I know I'm gonna take over so don't forget to like comment and subscribe <laughs> let me know if you've ever been like fake engaged or like you've gone through a situation but yeah comment down below and I hope you have a great day bye